Okay, talking about vaccination. Vaccination lately has again brought out the controversy whether you should do vaccination for yourself and your children, especially for children or not. Those that are against the vaccination, they're saying that there's evidence that sometimes kids get damaged from it. Brain damage could be worse, autism. So therefore, people are getting scared from doing vaccination to their kids. On the other hand, vaccination has been saving a tremendous amount of people. You know, in the 1800, there was a, there was a chemist and a physician, and he saved basically the, 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 he saved basically the world. There was an amount of 10 to 30 percent of society, of population, that died from the smallpox. And his name was uh, Edward Jenner. And there were some places that it cut up to 30 percent of death. And they just didn't know what to do. The smallpox are terrible uh, bumps that you get all over the body. It's uh, something that uh, gets a ra rash all over the body. If you see the pictures, it's disgusting. People that have, it's like a severe rash. It's not like a regular rash. Something that, it was terrible. It was throughout the whole world. People were dying right and left. Even those that were healing, they were, had the scabs like this that were terrible, horrible, awful for the entire life. People got blinded by it. You can imagine that 10% to 30% of society was wiped out by this until he came out with the vaccination, that was the first vaccination. He invented the vaccine for that, uh, for that disease. And since then, it was improved and was spread to many other diseases. He came up with the idea, he saw that those that had already the disease are more uh, immune, the system becomes more immune, and therefore he, uh, he understood that that's the way it should be done. What's a vaccination? You give a little bit of that sickness uh, a little bit of that disease to the body, and the body fights it out. Once it fights it out, it becomes stronger, and then if it's attacked by something that is stronger, the body is now immune, it knows how to fight. The body has an immune system for that. So that's saved society so much that today, it's almost not common to have any of those diseases. And some of the very, very severe diseases are terrible, and you have to uh, um, make sure that you get the vaccination for them. So some people are very much pro-vaccination because of what I'm saying. And after his invention, it got down from being 10% of society for the least to one out of, uh, out of a thousand that was, that was getting something, getting sick. And the vaccination also got killed, uh, it was, was able to kill something very, very minor. The, the, the vaccination was not that harmful. I mean, it today, today also, it's not that harmful. But sometimes you get those that get harmed by the vaccines. And Mimele, today, time and age, everything spreads in seconds with the media. So people hear about it right away, and it sounds very scary. You see a, you see a, a boy that was that was all healthy, running, smiling, talking, and all of a sudden you see that he's paralyzed because of vaccination he just made a week ago. So that's very much scares people. But when you come to the question, uh, that's called, uh, that, what is that one is just because of the preservative, not the vaccination itself. No, the vaccine, no, he, well, nothing is proven. Oh, oh, nothing is proven, proven but, um, the, the, it seems like there's enough evidence to say, but you, you have to understand that's that's called the casualty of war. Uh, when you when you when uh, it's a percentage, yeah, you have to you have to uh, uh, see what's the percentages, what's the damages, and what's the benefits of each things, right? As we call it, the pros and cons of vaccination, and you have to decide if it's right or wrong. But first, we want to understand how the Torah looks at those things. So I collected a few places that we see that the Torah says in various uh, Gemarot and Psukim, that one has to make sure that he takes care of his health. He has to make sure to prevent any kind of sickness that might come to him and his children. And that's an obligation of the Torah. For instance, I just uh, quote a few of them. First of all, the Psukim in the Torah, 
that we nishmarte more than afshotechem, and so on. That the Shulchan Aruch brings down and the Rambam brings down in a halacha. The Rambam says the following: Harbe dvarim asru chachamim b'neshem yesh b'em sakanat nefashot, which means the sakanat nefashot is the oraita, as quoted in the Levush. Sakanat nefashot is we nishmarte more than afshotechem. It's machloket. It doesn't. It seems to be a machloket uh, rishonim if keeping yourself from danger is the oraita or the rabbanan, but. It seems like the Rambam runs it to the Orat. It just says that Chachamim gave the guidelines what you should stay away from. And if a person says, you know what, it's my life, and I can do whatever I decide, and I'm putting myself into danger, what does it have to do with you? So the halacha is, Now don't, don't get uh, um, by this Lashon of the Rambam, Makat Mardut, get confused because Makat Mardut normally means the Rabbanan. Makat Mardut is only for violating a Yisur the Rabbanan. But the Yisur over here, Nishmarte Me'od and Nafshotechem, doesn't carry with it Malkot. It's not one of the lavim of the Torah. So we the only thing left is Makat Mardut. But we see how severe it is, how serious it is, that the Rambam, the Shulchan Aruch is posek like this. In the end of the Shulchan Aruch, in the Choshen Mishpat, the last, last um, uh, seif, over there, the Shulchan Aruch brings down in Siman Taf Kaf Zayin that um, that halacha of the Rambam, and he says one is not allowed to put himself into danger. So it's a very important halacha. The Shulchan Aruch brings all kind of different examples to that. Like for instance, Lo Yaniach Piv Al Asilon Veishte Velo Yishte Me Abeirot Balelot Shema Yivla Aluka Vuenoroi, which means let's say you want to drink from something that or that that has the water coming out. Today would be like a faucet that brings out water, but the faucets today are pretty safe. You have a place that runs, let's say, some kind of small uh, stream of water that runs on a stone, over a stone, whatever it is, and you want to drink, you're thirsty. So the halacha says in Shulchan Aruch, Shulchan Aruch, that you should not drink from such a thing at night. Why? Maybe you have over there, like aluka is like a dangerous bug, that in there, it will, feel, it will fall into your mouth, you swallow it, it's a dangerous thing. And therefore the Shohan Aruch says that that's not allowed. Also, so is you're not allowed to drink from a well at night, because you dig something out of the well, it's, it was completely dark, not like today, and you want to drink that cup from the well, you run into a serious issue of a luka that might be in there, and you mesakena tzmo bekach. So Shohan Aruch says that's not allowed, and the Shulchan Aruch quotes over there, in, 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 also in Yoreh uh, De'ah, Kuf Tetzayin, it quotes the halacha, Chova l'adam ba'ir ba'peretz, ba'paratz ha'dever, livoach mimena. If you have a dever, you have some kind of disease, that you have some kind of a plague around the city, you have, to, and it was poretz, paratz ha'dever, it becomes um, all over, right? So, in such a place that you have a plague, you have to run away from it. And that we see many, many places, many sources in Chazal, like for instance in Chulin, the feud, it says over there, Sakanta Meisura, which means Isur, as severe as it is, a prohibition of Torah, if you put it compared to to um, sakana, something that's dangerous, Chazal looked at sakana as more severe, which means if you have a safek isur, sometimes the halacha will tell you that you can uh, permit it. But when you have a safek sakana, you can never permit the safek sakana. So therefore, when we're dealing with something like that, you have to take it very seriously. Rambam, in the Mishnayot, Yuma Perkhet, the Mishnah over there in Dalit, he writes, the Rambam, that you have to make sure that when you deal with all kind of refuot, if there's a way how to heal yourself, alpi derech hateva, naturally, which means something that was um, found to work by the doctor, by the health department, by the, what, what is it called, the, the FDA. So su such a thing, the Rambam says, it's refua shebeteva, and one needs to take that very, very seriously. Unlike which means if you have a sgula, sgula to do a certain thing, you read 40 times Tehilim, you go to, uh, I don't know what, you go to a certain place, you spill certain waters, you drink certain waters, whatever it is, there's all kind of different segulot. The Rambam says don't take that seriously. The what you need to take seriously is refua shebateva. That's what the Rambam um, writes. So when you come into the question of vaccination, it seems like 
if you have a danger, you have to take that danger very seriously, although the danger is a small percentage, but when we're dealing with pikuach nefesh, pikuach nefesh always is looked at even on a very, very small chance that it will hurt you or hurt somebody else, as pikuach nefesh. We'll treat it as vadai pikuach nefesh. You can't be lenient on pikuach nefesh, even if it's a safek rachok. We found such a thing in the Mishnah, in Yuma Perekhet, Mishnah Zain, that goes to Alakha. It makes it to Alakha. The, 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 the Mishnah says, Mishnah Afla Alav Mapolet. There's a Mapolet, a house that fell down. That's called a Mapolet. So you have a rumble of uh, stones and debris, and you don't know if there's a person there, you don't know anything. But you pass by and you see, boop, the whole thing fell down. Safek usham, safek enosham. You have a doubt whether a person is there or not. Now we're talking about Shabbat, so you have to violate Shabbat in order to remove the stones. It, 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 it involves Hilul Shabbat. So you're allowed to be Mechalel Shabbat on something that's Pikuach Nefesh, definitely it's Tokhe Shabbat. But such a Pikuach Nefesh like this, that you have Safek, you have a doubt. Maybe there's somebody there, maybe not. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't be Mechalel. And secondly, even on the Tzad, that there is some, somebody there, Safek Chai, Safek Met. Even if you say that, yes, pro, could be that there's somebody there, Safek Nefashot, you have to try to save him. But maybe he's dead already. So you have now a Sfek Sfeka. Maybe somebody's there, maybe not. And even if he's there, maybe he's dead. And Safek Nochri, Safek Israel, another Safek. For only for Israel. So, Kechol she'arbu alav sfekot, says the Gemara, still mefakrim alav et agal. You still have to remove the debris, you have to re remove the stones, you have to remove the wood, everything, and try to save, even on a small, small chance that there'll be somebody there. So this Mishnah teaches us that when we're dealing with pikuach nefesh, you don't make any calculation, you take things very seriously. So now, we uh, mentioned in the past the Tiferet Israel that says over here that he learns fr from this Mishnah that when you have even a small safek, you have to treat it as pikuach nefesh. You learn from here about vaccinations. Af levafele. Already the Tiferet Israel says such a thing and he writes the following. Mizen irali heter. From here you see a heter. La sok, la sot in kulitan shel pakekan to use vaccinations, which means you need a hetel for this, because if you think about it, they take, some, they take the disease in a, in a small measure and they put it in somebody's body. It's, it's, it's something that you really should think twice about it. How could you take something that's a sickness and put it into somebody's body? And with the intention that the body should fight it, so if it would be 100% success without any failure, that's one thing. But now that we're talking about not 100% success, it's another issue. First of all, you can put it in somebody's body. Secondly, we're talking about something that's not 100% success. So where, where are you allowed to, how are you allowed to do such a thing? So the Tiferet Israel, huh? Yes. So the Tiferet Israel says, in kulitan shel pakekan, af she'echad me'elef met al yedea in kulitan, which means in their time, you see, it's, it's beduyak, echad me'elef. That was, the, that, was the, uh, that was the ratio back then. Today ratio is one out of 600,000. So we're talking about much better uh, ratio today. And you need to understand that also dying from a disease is also not that common. It's something about 2%. This is how I saw... In, uh, in a book called uh, Asia, Asia, Asia. It's a book about refuah in Halakha. So that's the, that's the numbers he brings over there. But the Tiferet Israel says over here, which means it teaches us the concept that you have to put both things on the scale and see what's better to do. You're taking a certain chance that by putting it there is a certain, uh, a certain chance that the kid would be harmed, one out of a thousand, let's say. But if you're not doing it, there's also a chance. So maybe Sheval Adif, maybe you shouldn't do anything. You should be passive. Because over here, the chance, you're right, there's more chance that the kid will be, get sick and be harmed because of that sickness. And there's more chance, and much more chance. But since there's also some kind of danger, some kind of danger on the other way, 
So maybe the 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 should be sheva al tase adif. Don't do anything. Don't do. Many times we see that when there's a doubt in halacha, sheva al tase. Just stay passive. And he says no. Since we're dealing with pikuach nefashot, you have to think about it and put things on the scale on the correct manner, not use sheva al tase. Which means if you have much more likelihood to get sick. If you don't treat the body with an immune system, with the, building up the immune system with the vaccination, so therefore that's the way you should do things. You should use vaccination. You're allowed to put yourself into a faraway danger in order to save yourself from a more likely danger. So you're putting things on a scale again. The danger comparing to the benefits you might get. What's better? He says the benefits is much better, and therefore you should go and vaccinate. And he brings over here proofs to that. He brings gemarot that you see that this should be the halacha. Now you need to know this uh, this uh, physician that invented the vaccination. His name was again Edward Jenner. Rav Israel Lifshitz, in Tiferet Israel, that we're talking about right now, he said that, that after he invented that, he says that it's chasid, he says it's chasid umot olam. Imagine, the Rambam says that chasid umot olam means somebody that keeps Sheva Mitzvot Bnei Noach, and he needs to keep Sheva Mitzvot Bnei Noach because the Kadosh Baruch commanded. He gave him the title without all that. If you have somebody that saves the, the universe, saves people, it just gives you a perspective. Today we tend to look at people and uh, although they do great things, eh, but you see that the Rabbanim, the great Rabbanim, didn't look at things like that. They saw, they saw uh, people that, he wasn't, he, I don't know if he was, uh, there's nothing to do with Judaism, right? The person didn't save any Jew, he didn't do anything for Jew, Jews, that, that, nothing to do with anything. He did something special for the, 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 the world, for the, uh, pa- 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 the entire population, something like that is already in- entitles him in a title of Hasidu Motolam, Haf Levafele. So we see that uh, this halacha that we're talking about over here is actually something that we need to a little bit to explain because when we're dealing with doing vaccination, you're actually saying to yourself that um, I'm not, I'm not going to go with what Chazal say, you should uh, treat. The Torah says, Tamim tiyeim Hashem elokecha. Be uh, tamim, do betmimut, italech imo betmimut. Ve'al tachkor acharav, but tamim tiyeim Hashem elokecha. Chazal already say that one should not be worried too much about different dangers. And you have a contradiction to that from this that it says in the Gemara, as we mentioned before, Ali amod adam bemakom, Sakana, lomar shosim lo nesh, shema en osim lo. The Gemara in Shabbat Lamed Bet says that one is not allowed to stand in a place of danger. Why? Maybe they're not going to make a nest. You say to yourself, oh, they make a nest, tamim tiyei mashem elokecha, and so on. He says, no, one minute. Leolam al yamod adam bemakom sakana, lomar shosim lo nesh. Don't ever rely on a miracle that a Kadosh Baruch will make for you. And even if a Kadosh Baruch makes for you, afilu osim lo nesh, the Gemara says, menakim lo mishuyotav. Which means, first of all, don't rely on a miracle. Don't go to a dangerous place. For instance, what's a dangerous place? You're not allowed to walk by a kir natui, a wall that's ready to fall down. So you say, you know what, I'll take my chance. People were walking here already for years. It still didn't fall. Let me walk. You go by a bridge that is shaky. Anything that is not 100% safe, you're not allowed to, uh, to go to such well, a... What is 100% safe? Well... If you go in a car, it's not 100% safe. Well, the, you you, a again, again, you, you, take, you, take, you take such a scenario and you put it on, uh, on numbers, on percentage. What's the percentage of flying in an airplane and getting hurt? What's the percentage of driving a car and getting hurt? It's very, very small percentage. So therefore, we rely... On, uh, on, on this, that, so that, that basically, but your, your question is touching what I want to deal with. When do you say that um, the danger is enough to say that, and when do you say that, 
תמים תהיה עם השם אלוקיך, יתהלך עמו בתמימות, don't worry about it, when do you say one of the two things? או שומר פתאים השם, השם will save those that are פתאים, what does it mean פתאים? A person that walks with השם בתמימות, he doesn't think about it, he doesn't calculate, he doesn't think what's going to be this way, that way, he just does things בתמימות, שומר פתאים השם, השם save such people. When do you say שומר פתאים השם? And when do you say, on the contrary, Ali Amod Adam Bemakom Sakana? There's few things that the Gemara brings over there. That, for instance, Rav Zera lo nafik levene dikla. He wouldn't walk between trees. It would be dangerous over there. The Amshe Shlomo in Bava Kama Peivav. He brings down Tanu Rabanan, Dever Bair Kanes Raglecha. Whenever you have a plague in the city, a Dever, Kanes Raglecha. Stay home. Don't leave the house. Why? You can get, uh, you can get the sickness. It's contagious. Dangerous. Don't go out. Don't go out. Shenemar ve'atem lo titzu ish mipetach beto ad boker. He uses, the Gemara uses the pasuk of Am Yisrael when HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought the mazikim to kill the Mitzrim, the bechorot of the Mitzrim. So it says over there, atem lo titzu ish mipetach beto ad boker. Nobody is allowed to leave the house. Why? Because the mashchit is outside. Kevan sh'atza mashchit. לא מבחין בין, בין טוב לרע, בין צדיק לרשע, דה משחית, דה מלאך המוות comes out and he re, is ready to kill, he doesn't see who's צדיק who's not, he's, he's, he just kills, same thing he, the Gemara learns over there in, uh, in Bava Kama that, um, that uh, the sixth parak, הכונס, the Gemara brings over there that you have such a mazik that's called a disease or kind of different sicknesses Stay home if it's contagious. Don't go out. When HaKadosh Baruch is angry and the devil comes out, he would seal the windows. Yeah, like you have a, a chemical uh, war. And uh, so you have to make sure that everything is sealed. You go into the special closed room, right? You go into Mamad. כדי שלא ייכנס בהם אוויר המעופש, in order that the air with the... שנה קמין? תנו רבנן דבר בעיר אל יעלך אדם באמצע הדרכים. says the ים של שלמה, the marshal, the following. אם כן הוא עדין לכל משאר מיני פורענויות המתרגשות ובאות לעולם. any kind of danger that comes to the world will be the same thing. מקום מקום אם יש בידו להציל בגופו ובממונו חלילה שימנע עצמו. One that has the ability to save himself from such sickness, such danger, such a thing, חלילה שימנע עצמו. He has to make everything, בין בגופו, בין בממונו. Make sure to save yourself and your mammon. If you could prevent it by taking precaution, you must do that. That's how it comes out. So when we're dealing with the question now, that we want to know that in one hand, on the other hand, we're dealing with a question of where do you draw the line? So Shemat Shabbat Ki Ilchata, Lamed Bet, Bet, brings from Sefer Shevet Yehuda. He brings the following, he says like this. The Gemara says, that kol davar sh'olam noagim la'asot ken ve'lo lachush, מותר אדם לסמוך על שומר פתאים השם. כי מה שקצרה יד האדם לדעת ולהיזהר ממנו, הקדוש ברוך הוא שומר עליו. וממילא, דבר שהעולם חוששים לו משום סכנה, הוא עדין בגדר סכנה. וכן גם דעת רב שלמה זלמן אורבך, that's how he writes. which means, let's define this. He says like this, whatever people do, and they're not scared, they're not feared, so you could do, and on that you say, שומר פתאים השם. That is the rule. Which means, driving a car, people do, Nobody is afraid to drive cars. So therefore, you could drive a car. And on that, you say, Shomer Pneim Hashem, Hashem will protect you. Hashem will protect you. Now, when we say Hashem will protect you, you have to remember that Hashem would protect you, but you have to be very careful. The Moray Nevochim, who wrote the Moray Nevochim? Rambam. He writes, the Moray Nevochim, Chele Gimel, Perek Yud Bet, that rov hatsarot shebaot al adam en lo mar shem ikzerat shamayim. Most of the, most of the issues a person have, most of the problems a person have, most of the sicknesses a person has, whatever problems, crisis, whatever thing, bad things that happen to a person, says the Rambam. This is a Rambam. You can't say mishamayim ikzerat shamayim. A kadosh who sent it to me. Why? Ki yesh meem shadam evi otam al atzmo besichluto. 
which means a person many times bring it upon himself, which means with your actions. You go outside without a coat, you get sick, you say, ah, Kadosh Buhu wanted me to get sick, not to go to work for the whole week. It's not a Kadosh Buhu. you went out without a coat, right? You went to a dangerous place, you went to a dangerous place, you need to know that, that you can't afterwards uh, blame a Kadosh Buhu. Very, very important concept. So says the Rambam, what is, what are the things that you can say, Mina Shamaim, if you completely not at fault at what happened? Accidents. Do not. If it's completely not your fault. Yeah, right, right, right. It, together with the idea of Shomer Pteim Hashem, which means you're driving your car and you don't have to worry, you're driving according to Some the law. Right? And somebody else made a mistake, so then it's, it, you used the concept of Shomer Pteim Hashem. You didn't do anything that people look at as dangerous, right? If somebody looks at, if people looked at what you're doing as a dangerous thing, so then you can't use the concept of Shomer Pteim Hashem. You say uh, that So there's many things that, there's regulation also, what you're allowed to do. Like for instance, you want to drive uh, texting on your cell phone. So that people view as a dangerous thing, and it's also against the law. So if something happens, chas v'shalom, you can't say, oh, mina shamayim, what should I do? No, you can't say that. First of all, you would be ali amod adam bemakom sakana. You're putting yourself into a danger, yourself and others. And secondly, let's say, for first of all, is shem alo simlones. Maybe a kadosh b'chuk would not take care of you. But even if kadosh b'chuk takes care of you, afilu simlones menakim lo mishchuyotav. Imagine you go to shamayim and you did a certain amount of mitzvot, and you see that a certain amount was erased. You say, why? I did those mitzvot. Yeah. But you put yourself into a danger, and HaKadosh Baruch was kind enough to save you from those dangers, but it has a price. Nothing's for free. It has a price. They take away the schuyot. We don't know. Chazal didn't say. Uh, each, each thing according to the danger you put yourself in. Is it worth it? I don't know. A person works so hard. To wake up in the morning, go to shul, you know, and, and put the fill in. It's, 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 it's so many mitzvot that we work so, so hard. Come to a shul, right? You'd rather stay in the snow, in the house, comfortable, cozy. You come to a shul. I don't know if that's really uh, something that... that so, 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 you, you're clearing yourself so from right. the mitzvot that you have. So I want to mention over here the Nishmat Avram. The Nishmat Avram, the Nishmat Avram, yeah. True, and Chazal say two things. And then this uh, question of Tosfot uh, in the third paragraph of Ktuvot, uh, he brings this question. On the other hand, it says, which means everything is Bidesh Amaim if a person gets sick, except if he went out in the cold, not dressed properly. He went out without taking care of yourself. So Tosfot asks, what do you mean? He's just told me that there could be, be De Shamaim Chutz Mirat Shamaim. And Tosfot says, true, when we're talking about Midot, so that's a Kol Bide Shamaim Chutz Mirat Shamaim. When we're talking about protecting yourself, you need to know that protecting yourself is a Kol Bide Shamaim Chutz except those things that you could protect yourself and you did the opposite. Just like the Rambam explained over here, I'm adding a little bit spice to that Tosfot. So, you need to know that a person could hurt himself. The Chobot Levavot says in Shara Bitachon that nobody could hurt you, even yourself. Even you yourself can't hurt yourself. So how is it possible that we're saying right now that a person could do things that would hurt himself? I saw the Mephoshim explain, I saw this in Sukkot David, um, of David Kviyat, and it's, it's, it seems to be a simple answer that the Mesilat Yisholim brings like that, that when a person tries to hurt himself, since you're not allowed to hurt yourself, a Kadosh Buchu over here intervenes, and for that, that you're trying to hurt yourself, you get punished, that's a punishment already, that you'll be able to hurt yourself. Which means, the Chavad Al-Vavot says, you can't hurt yourself. But, sometimes a person tries to hurt himself, and he's successful. I, Chavad al says you can't. The answer is, at that time that you try to hurt yourself, Okay, you, you, you're violating the Torah that doesn't allow you to hurt yourself. And therefore, that that you're trying to do would be able to be successful, right? So that is, gives us a... Says the Nishmat Avram, 
from Arav Noivrit, that's the Mechaber of Shomer Shmirat Shabbat Kilchata, he says a beautiful Chidush, he says like this, She'ekev ha'pachat she'yesh le'orim, me'ezeshu sikun she'yesh b'davar, which means there's a certain fear that parents have to do vaccination to the kids. So therefore, lo nitan ba'alacha la'achriya le'orim she'yeldeem ekablu chisun. We don't have the strength to force people to do the vaccination. We don't have that strength. We, as doctors, or as rabbis, or as friends, or as grandparents, whatever it is, should try as much as we can to convince them to do vaccinations for the kids. Because we just said, when you put things on the scale, it's much more beneficial than the, the, the other side. So therefore, you have to try to do as much as you can to convince them to give vaccination to their kids. But says Rav Noivrit, that you can't force them. Because since there is another side on the scale, it's not completely nothing's there. It will be nothing there, even if a small chance that a person could get sick, you have, to, um, you have to do the vaccination. But if you have something on the other side of the scale, although it's machria, it much, has much more weight, the side to do, right, the side of the controversy between those that are pro vaccination and those that are against the vaccination, right? So, but they're much more machria, but since there is a tzad on that, that a person might say that it's not worthwhile, I don't want to take the chance that my kid might get hurt because of that and harm because of that, so you can't force them. A beautiful understanding of Rav Noivit. So, when we come alakha lemaseh, almost across the board, the poskim, as we saw right now, would come out, whether we saw it beferush or what comes out from uh, various places that I, I read you very briefly, and I'm just telling you there's so much um, that the poskim speak about those things of a person that has to make sure that he, st- he keeps healthy, make sure that he goes to the doctor. There's an obligation to go to the doctor. Although the Ramban says, Male rofim bevet Hashem, the Ramban, it seems like a machloket Rambam and Rambam, if a person is allowed to go to doctors or not. The Rambam says you have to go to the doctor. And the Ramban, with noon, says, bevet Hashem. You shouldn't go to a doctor, you should rely on a Kadosh Buhu. But, Chacham Ovadia writes on this, that today even the Ramban would agree. That was only in his time. Bechtav Eliyahu wants to make a chiluk between a person that has a bitachon in a Kadosh Buhu, complete bitachon. So, such a person could rely on that Ramban Shita and not, not use the actors. And the Rambam is for those that have less bitachon. So a person has to do ishtadlut. Muhammad Vadi disagrees. He has a chuvan of He says, no, even the Ramban would agree today. This is not for us. A person, I, I, I met people that would not take the kids to the doctor. They would be very sick. They wouldn't get, why? Male rofim bevet Hashem. We don't go to doctors. That's such a idealism that they have. But the reality and the truth is that the poskim bring that there's a complete obligation to go to a doctor. That you must go to a doctor and consult with a doctor. Like for instance, before Yom Kippur, you need to know a person is allowed to fast or doesn't allow to fast. And many different other things as well. Or for Shabbat, what you're allowed to do. So the poskim would send out to doctors to find out what should be the halacha. They would not, uh, they would not ignore the doctor's opinions, and not only that they wouldn't ignore the doctor's opinion, they would send to the doctors to find out what should be done. And you can see, um, you can see that in, um, in, in many different, there's I, over here a list of poskim that say that you must consult with a do- doctor, Pachad Yitzchak, Mari Ben Lev, Mar Shach, Marimat, Alachot Ketanot, Avadat Agir Shoni, and so on, he keeps on going, Chavot Yair, Shev Yaakov, list that, that doesn't end, the Shavut Yaakov says, You must find out what the doctors say, what the doctors hold, in order to know how to apply the halacha. You can't ignore, you can't say there's doctors, and there's chokhmat teva, there's science, there's uh, biology, and whatever it is, and there's Torah. No, Torah relies on everything. You can't separate one from the other. Some, some people try to think and say that these are two different areas, two different wisdoms, and Torah is always right and they are always wrong. But the, the truth is that's not the way you look at it. That's not the outlook. The outlook is that the halakha sees what the doctors have to say, 
and you have to go to the most professional doctor, Alachayin Shulchan Aruch, that a person that is not um, a, the best doctor, which means you have in a hospital a better doctor than you, and you don't consult with him, and you don't get his opinion, you are considered shofech dam. You consider a murderer, because if you hurt that person that you treated, and the, the better doctor would be able to treat him, so... The doctor or the patient? A doctor. You as a patient also have the obligation. You go to a surgery, you must find out who's the best surgeon. You go to a doctor, if I, you have to know that your doctor knows what he's doing. You have to have a good doctor. You can't, take, you can't, you can't be lax with taking care of your body. Just so you're, not, you're not allowed to be lax with your nefesh. You have to go to the best rabbi, right? You can't, like, you know, to local rabbi for questions that are serious. You have simple questions, so... Um, but the serious questions, you go, to, you go to a serious rabbi. Same thing with doctors. You go to a serious doctor. You can't play games. So he says here that Chazal. In the Gemara, they asked the doctors. And the Rishonim did the same thing. And he keeps on going. We over here different uh, um, places that we see that Chazal, that Rishonim, and the, the, the poskim are always consulting, the halacha brings this down, consulting with the doctor. So over here, this is a question that you need to know how the medical world looks at it. What's better, to make the vaccination or not? If you come out that the danger would be, if let's say in the future they would come out and see that the danger to vaccin- of giving vaccination would be higher, and it's not worth it anymore. So therefore, the, the, the opinion also in halakha will change, because we rely on the opinion of the professionals in the field. And that is basically the end of that controversy of vaccination. Good vaccination, they do it on...